My friend Yeti is the living and breathing embodiment of the American spirit. He started everything on his own. He learned how to fabricate. He turned that skill into an online presence and now is sponsored by huge sponsors from all over the country. I can't think of a better guest to have in today's video to share with you guys how we got started fabricating, how we were able to teach ourselves a skill that so many people strive to have and what tips we would give a beginning fabricator today. Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna cover a topic that I get asked about a lot and I'm sure my friend Yeti gets asked about a lot as well and that is, how do you get started into metal fabrication? You're looking at two guys that taught ourselves. Um, we have been hanging out all day and we've kind of talked about fab off and on mm -hmm. and uh, I've been checking out the cool projects that he builds and uh, it's really cool to, did you hear that? <laughs> he lives in a shop right on the main road. <laughs> So you're gonna hear some stuff zipping by here and there. Yeah. But anyway, it's been super cool to be here with someone who has very similar taste as me and just to see the way he does things and the way he builds. And I wanted to make a video where we talk to you beginner fabricators who might be looking at your first machine or uh, even your first grinder. This is the Seriously. basics. And you might have some questions and uh, you might be curious about our story. So first we'll just, I just wanna start by asking, that we haven't talked about this, so this is gonna be perfect. How did you start fabricating? I'm really curious. Man, I got my start fabricating because I just plain couldn't afford to pay someone to build what I wanted. Yes, Straight I think we up. all know that. We Straight all know that up. feeling. <laughs> I walked. I, I think I walked into the little weld shop in this uh, small town I lived in in California and asked a guy to glue something together for me and realized, holy crap, you can get paid pretty good to do this. Oh yeah, so certainly. I saved you up. Can. You, you can. can get paid. You can also not. Which, you can also not. <laughs> which now you're, you're singing the song of my people. That's yeah, why. <laughs> totally. No, but really that's it. I really wanted something cool, couldn't afford it. Realized if you work really hard for something, mm -hmm. even if you have to teach yourself something new, I mean, one of the most important skill sets, I think we're gonna get into that is uh, the fact that you have the knowledge or the capabilities in your back pocket to do something. And yeah. If you're resourceful, yeah. My goodness, man, you could do anything. That being resource that is yeah. the most important word of the day. Resourceful. Resourcefulness. Yeah. I goodness. mean, being able to be flexible and being able to th the the real reality is a lot of times there's not really like one right way to do mm. whatever the task is. Mm -hmm. It's like how can you do it with the tools you got? Yep. Do you have a tube bender? Great. If you don't have a tube bender, but you have a torch and like mm. a metal bucket, People will bend yeah, tube yeah. doing that. So it's like there are multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. Yeah. And so once you found that need mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to uh, start fabricating, like what was your first machine? I'll tell you the truth. I had big hopes. I wanted a, I wanted a nice welding machine mm -hmm. and maybe a plasma and a tubing bender. But one of the first things I went out and picked up, super affordable, was a four and a half inch grinder. Yep. Some cutoff wheels, some flap discs. I think everyone starts yeah. with like a drill and a grinder, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, and I'll <laughs> tell you what, the a lot of the small projects come down to just being able to shape metal, move metal a little bit, or prep yep. metal. Totally. And I grabbed one of them, and I think I started on like a flux core little buzz box just mm -hmm. to glue some metal together. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a while, and that four and a half inch grinder came in real handy after, oh, <laughs> after yeah. learning the flux core, but. Absolutely. Yeah. That's where I started with just the basic stuff, you know, and uh, you slowly moved up and man, it's like everything else in yep. life. As soon as you get something that you think you need or want, yeah, you find out real quick there's something else you you need and want. So, yeah, you know, I, similar okay. story here, yeah. really. I mean, it's I, I started with uh, well, I started with a grinder first mm -hmm. and a drill and just like the basics that you need just to be able to like shape metal, yep. like you said, yep. and then. Um, I, I've had an offer at a, from a guy at work. Uh, he had a, a, this really crappy, it was Century was the brand, big like 110 welder, and the thing was awful. It constantly like <laughs> kinked wire in the machine. Just, and Yeah, I know, the, I know it. And guess what, and you spend more time fixing your welder yes. and pulling line out. Oh yeah. But if you could buzz metal together in the beginning, that's a huge, that's a huge leap forward from not yep. being able to weld or do stuff and like that. And so, so that's, that's how it was for me. Yep. I, once I learned how to weld with a crappy welder that was like super temperamental and mm -hmm. everything had to be really clean or else it would just, you know, it was just bird crap. And once I learned how to use that machine, it was 180 bucks. It mm -hmm. came with a bottle, but I didn't. I didn't have anyone to, you know, YouTube wasn't even a thing yeah, yet. Man. So I didn't really have any way to learn or anyone to pick their brain about it. So I just was like, oh, with flux core, you don't need, you don't need a bottle. That's yeah. cool. So I was just flux coring everything together. Um, and then, you know, my skills would grow from there. And then I would get a little bit of information from mm -hmm. someone that I'd work with or whatever. 
or watching Extreme 4x4, yeah, yeah. you'd get little... The OGs, right? Yeah. The OGs. And I, so I'd watch... This is like when Extreme 4x4 like first came out. This is probably like 06 or somewhere in there, 05 maybe. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and watching, watching Ian Weld and watching... Um, he would have tips and stuff on there. And then I started to like understand the things I was doing right, the things I was yeah. doing wrong. And, and then, but yeah, I started just building tons of stuff that I wanted to build mm -hmm. with like a really inexpensive flux core welder and probably the cheapest grinder I could find yeah. and a drill. And then, you know, like tape measure and the basic stuff like that. So, <laughs> and then yeah. slowly but surely you move up at, to bigger and better yeah. things. I think from there I went on to like just a catalog welder, mm -hmm. still no name brand, but at least it was 220. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, I was using gas, and mm -hmm. then just now I have a Miller. What do you weld with now? I'm just curious. <clears throat> Running a different, couple different ones. Yeah, it's a hodgepodge. I got my ESOB is my 220 uh, MIG, and then I think running Lincoln for my TIG, and I got a snap on. You know, a dual purpose one of those that can run on 220 or 110, and it does like a Luma spool and MIG, yeah. and then uh, TIG on that. So it's a little bit of everything. It's I mean, once you get into some good machines and get in, get into a good welder, they tend to live with you for a long time, yeah, right? Even if, even when technology jumps and you can add a machine to the mix, but it's funny how much of a relationship you have with a welding machine once you really spend some hours under the hood. I couldn't agree more. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, maybe I'll have one of them that'll get a little wacky once in a while, and it's like uh, I'm a little wacky myself. So yeah, <laughs> I, I work with it. I know how to hold the hold the wire and, and the torch, but uh, uh, that's you know just a mix of machines. It's whatever I can afford at the time. You know, I try to get the best I can because I understand there's a handful of tools that long term, if you're going to do this for a long time, they'll pay off on the back end because you'll have them in 10, 15 years still and running. A welding machine is yeah. definitely. And that's that, that, that's yeah. that machine for 100%. me. 100%. I think uh, for me, I do a little bit of everything from automotive paint to um, metal fab and some mechanical stuff. But the reality of it is, is that's part of like the pillar of three really important tool bases like welding machine and then all the things that come along with it. We talked about the grinders. Yeah. And, yeah. drills and stuff like that but and brush and yeah. all the all the stuff yeah. that, that goes along with I it. I mean one of the biggest things that we all overlook and is super affordable and uh really important is personal protection equipment. That's and it's not glamorous or pretty to talk about. Yeah. But if I was setting up you go back 25 years ago and you got grimy yeti trying to figure out how to build stuff, yeah. I wish I would have invested in good set of safety glasses, put gloves on wore an apron when I needed to block myself up because you get 20 years into it and you realize all the near misses and almost and yeah oh when you burn you burn yourself a yeah. lot yeah. one time I burned so. my belly button I was welding <laughs> it's that his topless welding he does uh, yeah he's, he's totally. in the crop he's finally got to the <laughs> yeah. crop so I mean I was welding underneath my TJ I think I was like 20 or 21 and I was welding some exhaust and uh it's just one of those, you know, you, sometimes you get one of those big mm -hmm. chunks of slag yeah. that just drops down. Well, my, my, well, I was wearing a sweatshirt, like a uh, dork, and yeah. the sweatshirt was up yeah. a little bit, and it just went bloop, right into the hole. Mm. It was horrible. Yeah. It took, I mean, <laughs> months to, like, really heal to where it didn't hurt anymore. If, if you have a tender spot on your bo oh, yeah. body, it's It'll find inside it. the belly button, It'll, and that's oh, where yeah. that cherry's going to land. <laughs> my God, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> and I, I've, I've uh, had friends that have had... It like bounce off the floor and go into their boot, Ugh. you know. Yeah, so it's you can't like dance fast enough to get the boot no. off. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. Well, you actually have friends who have welded in flip flops and what. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone has like mm. borderline done what you shouldn't be doing yeah, is for, yeah. like without the right protection equipment. Yeah. But that's a great point. I to mean, me. I, that is something that I would recommend to if someone came to me like a friend yeah. and they wanted to learn what to get started. That is something that I would yeah. absolutely cover with them. I'd be like, yeah. let's get you a really good hood. Yeah. I almost get him a better hood than a welder. Because yep. you got to be able to see really well to mm -hmm. weld really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to become a good welder, invest in a hood. Yeah. And really it comes down because you can see what you're doing. Yep. And then you can concentrate on technique. You yep. could really get yep. into what you're doing. And you leapfrog the God only knows how long amount of time that you're fighting with a hood, not understanding that your shade's too dark, too light. Yeah. You're a newbie. You yeah. don't know that. Totally. That's a good, that's a good point, though. So but the PPE stuff, yeah. super important yeah. stuff. And it's easy. Yeah. You know, and, and what I think that does for you before we move on from that is a it protects you and, and keeps you around longer to do what you want to do. But the reality of it is, is if you feel prepared, you feel safe, you're not distracted, you're not learning yeah. all the hard mistakes. I remember as a young guy, I was teaching a, a longtime buddy of mine how to weld for the first time, not even thinking about it. He shows up in like an old flannel 
you know, and those have all that fur, flannel, flannel fur. Oh, yeah. And as soon as he sparked off for the first time, he had, like, the, the dance around him, and I was like, oh, yeah, maybe maybe not the flannel today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're not a real welder unless you've caught yourself oh, on yeah. fire at least once. Well, I've day. caught myself on fire a you know, day. Once a day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> Let's be real clear about that. Yeah, now I finally, I mean, I wear... I don't wear like the full apron yeah, or anything, but I do. Way. I do wear like long sleeve, yeah. like the welding protective. Oh, that's like, smart. Burn. Yeah. You know, I don't wear sweatshirts anymore yeah. as often. I yeah. guess I should say there are still yeah. times yeah. when it's real cold. I'm out still or a something. hoodie guy, but yeah. But the problem with that is, you know, because it's like Swiss cheese. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's just like everything else. Tool for the job, even your personal yeah. protection equipment. It's like uh, we're preaching this. But then you'll see me in just like a half apron or no apron at all or not sleeves. That's but true. As I'm saying this, yeah, I'm realizing yeah. that I, last winter I definitely was welding in a sweatshirt. But I'd still, way more often than yeah. not, I do try to put it on the right PPE yeah. At, yeah. At now. Um, but you know, I also, if I'm just hacking stuff together, usually my, my PPE will be a little bit lighter because yeah. I'm just trying to get yeah. stuff to stick together. Yeah. And then when I'm finished welding is usually when I yeah. suit up. If you're going to spend some time on there burning, yeah. burning some long welds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a good start, right? That must be the wild YOLO. They call her the wild YOLO for a reason, man. <laughs> yeah. She's in there being wild. So uh, but if you were going to recommend, so I know that we're going to have people asking in the comments, mm -hmm. like, what machine should I start with? If you're going to recommend a machine, machine for someone to start with, what would it be? Well, it's easy. Uh, I'm not a cheerleader for any particular brand. Me neither. So I'm not going to just throw out a name. But I, what I will say is the best you could afford at the time. Yep. Period. And that's what it I It doesn't matter what it is. Too. And that could be... Harbor Freight entry level, if it's gonna put you in the garage and get you hood time, and you're yep. gonna be able to do little projects, uh, what, you're not gonna, not gonna get that because it's a Harbor Freight one? Mm -hmm. I think that's silly. Get it, do what you can, or if you if you got a little bit of coin saved up, do that, man. Buy yeah. it a little bit better. Buy a second hand machine. There, there's some great Second hand's a good stuff, point, because you know? especially if you get one like a Miller or a Lincoln or yeah, something, something name brand, because you can get the replacement parts yeah. for them at every welding yeah. supply, yeah. That stuff's easy to come by. But, solid, solid point. But today, I feel like there's a lot of really good quality welders for not a lot of money. Like a lot of off brands and yeah, stuff. Yeah, what, what's happened to the industry in the last 20 years that's really interesting is, and it's kind of like a call back to what you said earlier, was you said some off brand name and it was like, it's just this kind of blanket statement for yeah. junk, right? Yeah. It's just junk. Yeah. Well, nowadays, uh, you can get an off brand name machine. But it's just economy minded. It still does the job. But they cut here on, you know, maybe the cart doesn't come with a cart or it doesn't come with all the things you would want. You can upgrade that stuff. You can get yeah. a nice bottle. You can get a, you know, a good setup going. No so. doubt about it. Yeah, there's a lot of options. A lot but, more options than there was yeah, 20 years yeah. ago, for sure. Yeah, and, and what you were saying to that point is secondhand, I would recommend that's when you make the decision, if possible, to jump on like a Lincoln, a, yeah. a Miller, a Saab, something like that because. Man, parts availability is huge. And it consumables, is. you don't realize that when you get into it, that you will run through consumables. And if you have yep. some wacky thing that you can't chase down I've, a I've had wacky thing for, that you can't get gosh, tips. It's man. hard to get. It's like just a yeah. random Chinese yeah. Yeah. brand tip. So I'm like going and trying. To, you, I can't get any welding supplies. So then I order a random <laughs> pack of tips on Amazon. <laughs> and you start... Just, you start to think some dude hand cut the threads. Yeah, the like, totally. this don't even make sense to Absolutely. me. Absolutely, <laughs> that's how that century was, man. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. so. Yeah, it's there, there's obviously a lot that goes into picking out the right equipment, mm. and there's a lot that goes into um, into like how do you how do you get the skills and like mm. the the best way to approach this. This is like such a hard topic to cover, and this mm. is just like a small conversation, yeah. right? But I think that. Getting the best equipment you can afford right now is huge. And what I can say to anyone who wants to learn how to weld is what I would say to someone who is my apprentice when I was a plumber, is you gotta put your hours in. Yep. It's that simple. Straight it, up. You, know, it, you have to log 5,000, at least in Washington where I live, you gotta log 5,000 hours as an apprentice through the state in order to even apply for your journeyman license, right? So that, the reason they do it that way is because you gotta put the hours in in order to become a good plumber, to be a good tradesman. Mm -hmm. And so I look at, uh, fabrication the exact same way. You just gotta get the hours in. So if the hours mean you start on a century like I did, you still gotta get the hours in. Yeah, doesn't you know? matter, you can't replace that. It doesn't. And, and I think a lot of people who would drop like, if you if you save up the money, you do drop the coin on a really high-end welder, especially if you got like a high-end TIG or something that has way more features that you could even understand as a beginner. Yep. It might be detrimental. You might get frustrated and not wanna practice as often because you're like- It's overwhelming. You don't even know how to set up the machine. It's overwhelming, like it's where overwhelming. do you start? Yeah. There's a lot of good tech out right now where uh, 
shoot, I think the ESOM and a couple of my other machines, you could just put it to a general setting where you set the thickness and the wire size or something like that and it'll do the work for you. And I mean, it's just like anything else, uh, tunable, right? So there's any variant of how you're gonna set up for the actual job you're doing. But my goodness, for a starting, I would have been a much be better welder in, in the beginning if I had a machine that would do the initial kind yeah. of setup put you in the zone and let you just burn the weld and figure yep. that out. I couldn't agree more. Um, My Miller's that way. And yeah. even as so someone that I've been, you know, I'm not like a seasoned fabricator or anything, right. but I've been playing around for like 15 ish years. And even for someone with me it has as many hours under the hood as I have hat. My Miller has an auto set and it gets you in the ballpark yeah. right out of the yeah. gate. And it's so nice to start like right. It, yeah. And my, my welding, style is flexible enough that if it's close i can make it work yep. you know what i mean yep. whereas like with you have to whenever you first start your your settings need to be dialed in really close because you don't know like oh i need to go a little faster or mm -hmm. i need to go a little mm -hmm. slower and i think that even for someone who's a little bit more seasoned and has a little more hood time it's still really nice to have those kinds of features yeah i still run it especially when i'm bouncing between uh different types of welds or yeah different stuff i'm doing at the same time and maybe i have uh the tig going but i have my MIG machine sitting there, it's nice to pick it up and burn something real quick and know yep. that it's going to work. Yep. And like you said, in the beginning, you're not going to know if you need to speed up, slow down, more speed, more heat. You don't, you don't know any of that. So no. you're just going to know you suck. Yeah. And this sucks. <laughs> and this isn't what you yeah. thought it was. Totally. So that's yeah. a deterrent, right? That's a deterrent. That is yeah. definitely a deterrent. You know. So um, I think that a good way to end this would be, I'm curious, what do you think you are least proficient at? And what, like, what, would, oh. what skill? Because in my opinion, fabrication is a skill you will never master. Mm -hmm. It's something you will always be trying to get better at mm -hmm. and trying to just, you know, I don't know, improve that skill set in some way or another. So I know what my weak link is. I'm curious what you think yeah. your weak link is. I can name the things that I'm, <laughs> let, I could name what I'm good at faster than all the things I need to yeah. get better at right now. <laughs> totally. But the reality of it is uh, there's a couple things that I'm super interested in and want to do more uh -huh. uh, just because it's cool. And that's, uh, you know, just panel shaping, real raw sheet metal yeah. type fabrication stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, coach work type stuff. Really love to do. I did a lot of that in the past. I had a few years of just doing that heavy, but I mean, the sky's the limit with that. There's just some artists out there that are killing it. And Instagram's full of them. Oh yeah. And it makes you feel like, yeah. man, Every time I, I go on an English wheel. <laughs> my gosh. Yeah. I go, I go, I went to my buddy's shop and the flying Dutchman down in SoCal and I walked in there and I felt like I was a baby again. Yep. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. There are some real so, wizards out there. I would really love, I think that's, I mean, and, and I love that. Anyways, I, I love the idea of being able to just hand form or yep. form anything like that. Me so, too. Um, if I could spend ungodly amount of hours doing something in the near future and getting better at it, I would love to spend some of that time on that. So You made me change my answer. Uh -oh. I was going to say TIG. I'd like to get a lot better at aluminum TIG, yeah. um, but... I also, I, something that I am secretly obsessed with is the amazing bead rolling and sheet metal work that same, people do online. Same, same. Uh, it's so incredible watching someone who builds a custom truck bed and the whole inside is like rolled perfect oh, with fluid and beautifully oh, flows. God, it's and amazing. It, yeah. And then yeah. at some point, you know, while they were shaping it, they brushed everything the same direction. <laughs> and it's just, it's incredible. Oh, I, I would love to... I would love to get better at that. That's yeah. one that'll be a life. That's definitely one that I'll be chasing for the rest of my life. Because yeah. there will be times where I'll have projects where I'll be able to maybe cut out a chunk of a fender and replicate what it did look mm -hmm. like and patch that mm -hmm. in. But like to get to that level where you can like design a whole interior on a bead roller. Oh, that's, be that's bitching. It, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, good, so. good call. Well, now you're making me want to change mine. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they fall into the same category. They certainly right? do. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway. Uh, what if if, there, if you're new and that you were looking for one big takeaway? If we want to put a bow on this thing, mm -hmm. for me, I would say prep everything really well, mm -hmm. especially at the beginning. I mean, as you get better, you can get to where you can weld over some pretty nasty stuff and make it okay. But at the beginning, mm -hmm. prep your surfaces, chamfer your edges, do everything you can to dial in your machine before you weld the stuff that's important. And that is that is my little piece of advice to you because I wish that I could tell young Nate to do that. <laughs> Spend more time. <laughs> prepping your surface so it's not just pop, pop, popping on you. It, doing yourself a favor at that point. Yeah. You really are. Doing so, yourself a favor. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining hey, me in the man, conversation. It was a pleasure. It was yeah. a pleasure. I love being here in the yeah. shop. I'll, I'll throw some B-roll in this video of the shop because it is super dope. You, <laughs> these guys have, him and Yolo have such a good eye for design. So if you did like the video and you want to see more like it, 
like, subscribe, all that other stuff. If you wanna help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, you know, hats, neck gaiters, all that kind of stuff. We also have a link to our Patreon account and I am doing a ton more on Patreon now. And in fact, after this, him and I are gonna do a little Patreon Q&A because once a month I try to do a Q&A for my Patreon supporters. Uh, if you wanna follow me, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. If you wanna follow Yeti, he is? At the man called Yeti. At the man called Yeti. <laughs> we'll see you later.